Hi everyone, this is Jen from Group 2. Welcome to Syracuse University's Data Analytics poster presentation. Before we start, I'd like to shoot the question. Have you ever wondered how Netflix, Hulu, or any streaming platform suggests you a movie or TV show you would bring on? Well, the reasons are quite apparent. With the increase in volume of data and the advancement in black box algorithm, many streaming sites predict the movie you would like to watch. With the streaming platform take over the market, we plan on making a similar model that not only recommends a good movie, but also give other meaningful insights, like how cast, directors, and the general matter in shaping the success of a movie. With two of my classmates, I'm going to take you an extensive walk through our project on an analyzing trends in movie and uh, predicting the score of a movie. We as a group are going explain the methodology used outcomes and insights derived from our analysis. The data set we worked on is uh, extracted from Kago competition. It is the Rotten Tomato movie review records. There are 17 features in the data set. Our goal is to infer from the data set to see what matters the audience the most for their movie preference. We categorize the genre of movies, the type and the reputation of each directors and uh, actors. By visualizing the feature, we captured the rate trending with time series for the past 10, uh, 100 years. And uh, the dash app led us to explore the data set in uh, an extensive way. I mean, uh, Shavio? So hi, uh, as my fellow teammate uh, Jan just mentioned, I will be covering uh, the data exploration and uh, wrangling in detail along with the use of ensemble models for delving deep into predicting whether a movie is good or not. So I'll be covering the basic business questions that uh, we will be addressing while analyzing the movie reviews, like which attributes affect the likelihood of watching a movie the most? Which class of movies have the strongest polarity? Do critics and audience views match? Uh, which writers, directors, and studios have the strongest polarity? Uh, in other words, which studio directors and stu uh, writers are the most revered? So uh, I used ensemble learning models for predicting whether uh, the polarity for a particular movie was strong, along with doing some EDA in order to do in order to make some major breakthroughs and discoveries in debunking some of the myths that people usually have when it comes to watching a movie. So. Um, while doing the uh, EDA, I uh, made use of uh, different imputation techniques like uh, the mice imputation for uh, imputing uh, data iteratively. I vincerized the data, um, which uh, basically uh, finds the p-value for the 95th percentile and any value above and below uh, the 95th and the 5th percentile is uh, bought uh, to the range uh, of P such that it satisfies the P equal to 0 0.5 constraint. Um, I filled the NA values through imputation using mean, median, and mode, depending upon the category of variable. Um, I also use standardization as a technique uh, so that my ensemble learning models uh, would be able to gauge the effects of every attribute correctly and no uh, column that has high range uh, of values like running time whose values could range from 10 to 20, uh, 10 to uh, 
200 minutes uh, would overpower the uh, lower uh, numerical values. So uh, what is basically an ensemble uh, learning model? So um, ensemble learning model basically comprises of your boosting and bagging. Boosting is based on weak learners in terms of decision trees. Weak learners are shallow trees, sometimes even as small as decision stumps. Boosting reduces error mainly by reducing bias. On the other hand, random forest uses, as you said, fully grown decision trees. It tackles the error reduction task in the opposite way by reducing variance. The trees are made uncorrelated to maximize the decrease in variance, but the algorithm cannot reduce bias. Hence the need for unpruned trees so that the bias is initially as low as possible. Random forest and gradient boosting machine both are ensemble learning methods and predict by combining the outputs of individual trees, which are weaker trees. They have all the strengths and weaknesses of ensemble methods. Uh, so they both of them vary in different ways. Uh, the gradient boosting trees build trees one at a time where each new tree helps to correct the errors made by previously trained trees by assigning more weights to the uh, tree or to the misclassifications that were made in the first model. Uh, in a random forest tree, each tree works independently using a random sample of data. This randomness helps to make the model more robust than a single decision tree and less likely to overfit the data. So let me share with you um, uh, so, uh, as you can clearly uh, see from the uh, gradient boosting, as I mentioned earlier, it uh, builds up, it basically uh, assigns more weights to the misclassifications of uh, previous models. Um, and uh, the random forest uh, builds on multiple uh, trees as a result of which it might not get a better accuracy but uh, it doesn't overfit the model. So I got an accuracy of 90% uh, on my uh, random forest uh, in comparison to my gradient boosting, uh, which gave me an uh, accuracy of 100%. Uh, so uh, you can clearly see uh, the difference. Uh, the gradient boosting model is clearly overfitting while the uh, random forest model is clearly not overfitting. Uh, coming back to the uh, process of EDA, I made use of urban sizing, standardization techniques, and I, I came upon some interesting uh, discoveries, which I would like to share with you all. Uh, so uh, one of the key discoveries that I found was that uh, if you rank directors only on the basis of uh, uh, the uh, of the audience rating that they receive, there are many directors that have 100 uh, rating, but then that doesn't qualify those directors to be reviewed directors because that could be an anomaly. So I made a filter wherein uh, the directors should have a certain number of movies, uh, should have a certain number of threshold movies in order to qualify as a director, after which I computed the weighted average. So Akira Kurosawa has the highest uh, rating and is the most revered director. And similarly for the most hated directors in order to prevent the scenario of an anomaly, uh, I kept a certain threshold values for a director uh, to qualify as a revered, as a recognized director. And these are the directors that ha have received the least ratings. Then coming on to the genres, uh, these are the genres that have received the highest rating. So, the classic comedy drama uh, uh, genre has the highest ratings uh, overall. So this is being done on an average basis. Another most important uh, major discovery that I made uh, while doing EDA was that uh, critics uh, tend to give uh, higher ratings uh, than what audiences do. And I uh, the, the mean value usually comes around the same. But when it comes to the median value, uh, Uh, but when it uh, comes to the median uh, values, you can clearly see uh, uh, that the median value for uh, uh, 
uh, the uh, critics is clearly on the right, which makes it a left skewed uh, graph, clearly showing that the critic ratings are higher than uh, that of what an audience rating is, uh, thus debunking the so-called myth. Um, and these are the critic ratings over the years. So the thing is that uh, uh, the number of movies being released uh, on a yearly basis uh, is more, but that does not definitely mean that uh, the movies that are being released on a, a daily basis are good. So uh, this is the graph of the total movies that have been released, which clearly shows an upward trend. But uh, when it comes to the audience ratings of movies over the years, along with the critic ratings, uh, it clearly shows a decline, um, clearly uh, showing that uh, cinema is not what it used to be. Uh, these are some of the top 10 studios. Uh, and uh, another major discovery made here is that Sony Pictures uh, Classic is at the top here. Uh, Net, uh, Netflix, is, uh, at, uh, Netflix is also there in the top 10. Uh, so, uh, one important uh, discovery I made here is that the studio doesn't uh, matter much in, uh, uh, dis in, in deciding whether a uh, movie would be good uh, because Sony Pictures Classic uh, is the, has received the most number of critically fresh ratings but at the same time has also re received a critically bad rating. So uh, that should be kept in mind uh, that studios definitely do not contribute towards the likeliness of a movie. Uh, these are some of the pie plots that uh, were created, uh, clearly showing that drama is the most watched genre. Uh, now the rating uh, fresh uh, is most uh, with uh, the rate uh, with the rating status of uh, not rated. And uh, it is mostly rotten for the rating status of uh, R-rated movies. Uh, um, uh, my fellow partner, Yuan He, uh, will continue uh, with uh, the further topics. Okay, next, uh, I will... Okay. Um, hi, Professor. I'm Yue Yuanhe. So next, I will talk about logistic regression because it is also a good model for this problem. As we all know, logistic regression is a appropriate regression analysis to conduct when the dependent variable is dictonomous. Like all regression analysis, the logistic regression is a predictive analysis. Logistic regression is used to describe data and to explain the relationship between one dependent binary variable and one or more nominable, nominal ordinal, interval, or retinal level in independent variables. In this, in this model, we also use uh, regularization, and uh, we use L1 regularization. L1 regularization at an L1 penalty equal to the absolute value of the magnitude of coefficients. In other words, it limits the size of the coefficient. L1 can yield sparse models. And uh, L2 regularization as an L2 penalty equal to the square of the magnitude of coefficients. And L2 will not yield sparse models and all coefficients are shrank by the same factor. Uh, at Jianjie and Shabell said before, we have done a lot of efforts on data processing and data modeling by using the knowledge and skills we learned from IST 707. So we also want to uh, pay more efforts on sentiment analysis because we are doing an analysis of movie re 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 reviews. So sentiment analysis is indispensable. I have done some work about sentiments analysis using NLTK to try to find some interesting behind these re reviews. And also we will transform into term frequency metrics and calculate the TFT IDF score to see if anything will be able to be further explored. And uh, that's all our uh, project. Uh, thank you, Professor.